All right, let's go join Dr. Morgan and see what he's up to. Hi, Doctor. Hello, Jason. So, tell us a bit more about your project and uh, sort of the effects of grazing and uh, browsing on soil and as well the Mopani over here. Okay. Um, this particular experiment we're standing in here, it fits into this whole thing about the effects of um, animals on plants, on soils, and how that again feeds, feeds back into the quality of the vegetation. Yeah. And then again, how the animals use it. Okay. Uh, the area that we're in here is an area that's used um, quite frequently by elephants. So, um, what we are trying to do here is within that habitat type, so not moving away from it, mm -hmm. to see in a controlled fashion what the effect of the browsing of the Mopani trees is um, on the Mopani health and then again how that feeds into the system. Mm -hmm. um, and now the project, this whole Oryx project, is a partnership between Namibia, University of Science and Technology and um, UNAM. And then there are four German universities involved okay. as well. Okay. So this particular experiment that we have um, is by Dr. Katja Geisler from Potsdam University in okay. Germany. And she's the plant physiologist. Now, okay. unfortunately with COVID, she's sitting in Germany. Otherwise, I would have loved to have had her here to explain everything. Uh, but as a wildlife ecologist, I'll, I'll try my best to, to give you a little bit of an idea what's happening here. Please, please. I would like, I mean, let's go in deep um, as much as we can. Okay. Mm. So we're, this is the, the logger box. If you, if you look around, you'll mm -hmm. see that we have trees. Yeah. So there are 20 trees which have probes going into the tree sap. A, a tree is basically a pump. Okay, first of all, it's a factory for carbohydrates in the leaves through photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. But it also is a pump pumping water. So the healthier the tree is, the more it's pumping water from the ground, photosynthesizing in the leaves, mm -hmm. transpiring. So the plant saps then are moving up. Yeah. Right, when the reverse comes, where they're taking in carbon dioxide, obviously it moves down. So this entire process, if you can measure the rate at which it rises and drops, you can measure how happy the tree is. Okay. So so each tree has a has a name or a number, and it gets treated differently. So looking in there, yeah, you will see. There's a little syringe, looks like it, a little yeah. needle, yeah. going into the tree, into the tree sap. And each one of these trees that you see marked here, have that. So this measurement here, so this is the, this is the cable mm -hmm. going down into the logger box where we started off yeah. here, each of those trees. So what we're trying to do here, or what Katja and her team from Potsdam are trying to do here, is in a controlled way, imitate browsing by elephants, kudu, eland, any of those animals that utilize the Mopani mm -hmm. trees. So we would come and the students would be browsing the tree. So we would say, we would like this tree to be browsed at 30%. So they would come in the, in the, in the summer season when the leaves are all here, and they will collect 30% of the leaf material mm -hmm. on this tree right and then we would see what that 30 percent browse would do to the tree itself and how much continual browsing we should do on a tree to let it die so we've left it for this year to have a normal year so they, mm -hmm. they, they'll all grow up they'll produce mm -hmm. and then the leaves would shed but Mpani is wonderful the, the leaves are only really off the tree is continually producing leaves and they're only off for about two months of the year before they regenerate yeah. leaves. So we've let it for a year and when the season comes, the next season comes, we will then browse the tree, some 30%, some 100%, some 20%, some we will imitate what a, a, an animal does um, and then see what it takes for them to, to die off mm -hmm. and also what the effect of continual browsing is on our savanna in terms of trees. A lot of work in Southern Africa has been done on savanna grassland, mm -hmm. 
what the effect of graze is on grass, but there's been very, very little done on trees. So we're quite excited to see how this all uh, fits into the system. Actually, for up to two years, the information from the trees can be saved in here. And then whenever you come around, you can just download the data. So we can do a quick data download. Ah, did you hear that? Yeah. I'll tell you what that's about. Okay, while it's all firing up. There. Yeah. So that da 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 da. The data from each of these loggers of the trees is coming in every minute. So that data is about the sap levels, how they've changed since the previous minute. So you can get a very, very fine scale data of what's happening on these trees. And I'm not a plant physiologist, but what Katya will do is then model the comparative uh, product productivity and health of these trees. And All right, so how long will this study be actually? Well, we have so, so few long-term studies in Namibia. Mm -hmm. Often you would have a study, it's a short-term study. We want to see what the behavior of this animal is. Two, three years, it gets written up as a thesis or a paper and all that. All the work that we're doing on this property, we've, we've spoken to the ownership as well. We'd like to get it as long as possible. So hopefully by the time I'm retired, 20 years time or so, yeah. this is still running and uh, we can still produce the data from this because then you can bring in ra how rainfall seasons are affected, mm. climate change perhaps. You need those long-term data sets. That would be very nice to see looking at the whole reserve and the effects of the different wildlife that is here and how much um, vegetation there is for the wildlife and that also plays a role in um, reproducing and all of that. That's, that's true and in the whole conservation system we tend to have um, really forgotten to look at this whole dynamics of savannah systems. So um, browsing and grazing being a massive part of savannas um, is what is one of the big questions we want to answer. We're kind of trying to invigorate um, empirical science in the field again. And the interpretation is done by Katja. So I'm not involved in the interpretation of this. I'm very interested in when she's analyzed the results, how that fits into our movement studies in the area, and then to go into the field and see whether we've got similar conditions out in the field as compared to our controlled conditions in here. How does the browsing affect where the animals are going and how does that look at perhaps what's going on in the soils which we're going to have a look at now the other experiment that's here. So we have a normal weather station up here as well mm -hmm. um, measuring your measuring your rainfall up to 0 0.1 millimeters temperature um, sunlight here's a little sensor Okay. Uh, how much sunlight you have, how much daylight, because that affects how much photosynthesis comes from the yeah. plants as well. So, so it's all connected. Then we have, similarly to the other side, we have a logger in here. Similar to the other one, your weather information is being logged. And then you have, down here, you can see there are also probes going down. Now, this is to measure soil moisture. Because in Namibia, as you know, uh, one of your big drivers, you can have elephants destroying as much as you want, but one of your big drivers of the ecology will be how much water is, is in the soil mm -hmm. and at which depths that is. So we have at two levels. So here, there are some of the probes going to right where we're standing over here. Yeah. And these are what the, mo the soil moisture probes look like, more or less. They're not exactly the same ones, but... Um, I had one available. So that's measuring your soil moisture. This is also measuring conductivity and temperature. So you've got, okay. you've got the soil temperature plus the soil moisture. Soil moisture being the most important one. So we have probes in here at different levels. Mm -hmm. We have 10 centimeters, 30 centimeters, 50 centimeters, and one meter under the ground. So these probes are standing in there and they're measuring the soil moisture. Then you've got to the other side. So this is an, this is an open area without tree cover. Or bush cover. Okay. Then to the other side the probes are also going. So here we've got the same depth um, of probes going into the ground mm -hmm. at the different levels. Yep. So what will happen for example if it rains, we're capturing how much rain is falling yeah. and that will determine how much water infiltrates into the ground and we can determine is it going up to 10, 30, 50, 100 centimeters 
into the ground and also over time then how it evaporates. Because we do know in theory, they say, well, open areas, there is going to be less infiltration because there are less roots to allow the water yeah. and aeration to allow the water to go down. Plus your retention under the sort of shady patch is going to be better okay. than in an open area. However, in, under a tree area, you also have the competition of, of from the, the tree taking up the moisture as well. So those dynamics are also going to be important because let's say you lose the Mapani tree mm -hmm. due to overbrows. What is the effect going to be on soil moisture? And therefore, what is the effect going to be on production of grass and new plants? When you look at bush encroachment, and maybe especially the central northern areas, we will talk about that bush is becoming more and more because of overgrazing. Mm -hmm. But there's more to it. There's also the browsing that plays a role. So what we'll be able to do here is also determine, because your trees are taking water from deeper down, plus they are far better competitors than the grasses. So if we lose the trees, what will be the problem? If we overgraze, what will be the problem? Will we take, get bush encroachment to increase or to decrease? So we're always, our theory is that with elephants and with other browsers, it helps to open up mm -hmm. an area so that more grass can grow. But is that going to happen? Let's test it empirically. So this is all about getting numbers for these things to really prove our theories. As we basically conclude here, uh, let's stay in tune for the next part.